What's up, everybody? Matt Kajewski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel. And today we're continuing our bowl breakdowns with the Thursday game. It's Air Force taking on Baylor. We'll dive into everything you need to know, but before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. If you're listening on podcast, make sure to leave a rating and review and hit subscribe over there too. It helps a ton, so thank you if you've done that. We are presented by BetMGM. Thank you to them. We'll talk a very special offer later in the show. And without further ado, let's dive into this. All right, everyone. Thursday night, December the 22nd. One bowl game, and it's a fun one. It's Air Force taking on Baylor. A lot of line movement here as it stands. Baylor is a four-point favorite, and the total in this game is 43 points. That makes sense. We are dealing with two power-based run teams overall, which makes for a fun environment. Starting things off, we'll talk transfers, opt-outs, injuries. Air Force is pretty intact. The only player that we really have to mention right now is Dane Kinnaman. He's one of their slot backs. Hasn't played in a while for them, but ultimately, these Armed Force Academies, you're typically not getting a lot of transfers. You're not getting opt-outs. They're, for the most part, not NFL-caliber players at the Service Academy. But it's a very strong one and a team that a lot of people thought would win the Mountain West. Ultimately, they didn't, they didn't get there, but it's a strong team that's intact. On the Baylor side, we don't have too many opt-outs. We do have a couple transfers. Safety, Devin Neal is not going to play in this game. He played 358 snaps for this team. And then they lost Micah Masua, an offensive lineman. He did play 759 snaps, but ultimately this Baylor team is still pretty intact and they were a young team heading into the year. And wh I want to start with that. They were a little bit up and down. They had a number of losses, but I think some of them that could have turned into wins. So let's run through the schedule. They open up against Albany. Resounding win makes sense. They play BYU. They lose 26 to 20. That was at a when BYU was full strength from there. Texas State win against Iowa State. They lost to Oklahoma State 36 to 25, but they had a post game win expectancy of 53%. You remember that game? A lot of errors that ended up costing Baylor. And that's the story of a lot of their season. The next game, they lose to West Virginia 43 to 40. They had a 65% post game win expectancy in that game. That was a weekday game and a game they clearly should have won. From there, they beat Kansas, Texas Tech, Oklahoma. They get dismantled by Kansas State. Can't poke any holes in that. One point loss to conference champs TCU, a game they were potentially going to win, came down to the last second. And then they lost to Texas to close out the year. So on paper, you have a Baylor team that maybe could have finished with, you know, like a nine and three record if all of their games actually played to the post game win expectancy. And to explain that a little bit, if you play these games out thousands of times, for reference, if we played the West Virginia game out thousands of times, Baylor wins that game 65% of the time is basically what it means. So a stronger Baylor team on paper than I think people are giving it credit for right now and a team that is fairly intact considering how young they were. And then on the other side, you have Air Force, their schedule. They're playing in the Mountain West. This is a conference I was trying to sort of fade from a macro level at the beginning of the year. And I think I'm going to continue doing so right now in bowl season. Their schedule wins over Northern Iowa, Colorado. They immediately lose to Wyoming by three points. Nothing fishy there. They beat Nevada. They beat Navy by three. They lose to Utah State in a game where they had a 1.5% postgame win expectancy. They should have lost by more. UNLV, they got blown out. Or they, excuse me, they blew out UNLV. Let's not get that confused. They lose to Boise State. They beat Army by six. Blow out New Mexico. Beat Colorado State by 12 and beat San Diego State by 10, a game where they had only had a 44% postgame win expectancy, a game they won but should have lost. So to me, this schedule has a lot of questions. One, why are you losing to teams like Wyoming? Why are you losing to teams like San Diego State? Why are you playing teams like Navy to three points? I know that's a service academy on the other side that plays the same style of offense. Those can be really tough, grinded out, low margin for error games. But this Air Force team has not played anywhere close to the same schedule as Baylor, and they haven't succeeded to the same degree with this week's schedule. To get into the dynamics of bowl season, you always have to worry about motivation. Baylor, they're doing things a little different than Air Force right now. This is heavy recruiting time for them. They're all over Texas trying to get their roster set for next year. Air Force doesn't have to worry about that as much, being a service academy. They're always motivated for bowls. They have a very strong track record covering spreads in bowls. But ultimately, this comes down to level of competition. Even with potentially limited practice time, coaches on the road, 
Baylor just is a better team. And we can dive into the stylistics here. They're losing one offensive line, but this team is still top 20 in both pass blocking and run blocking. Air Force's defense ranks 71st in run defense. Even with Blake Shapin being questionable at times this year, Richard Reese and the slew of backs that Baylor is going to use should be able to run rough shot all over Air Force. On the other side, you kind of have the same concerns. Baylor's defense ranks 73rd in run D. I think they've played a little below expectation this year, but Air Force has a strong offensive line. They should be able to run on Baylor. Ultimately, which team is going to have more success? Because we have two good run offenses against two bad run defenses. I'll take the team that played the Big 12, especially considering Air Force has taken a ton of money. So again, the bet maybe was Air Force at the beginning of bowl season. They were run a touchdown underdog. But right now at minus four, I'm leaning Baylor. Air Force continues to take money, so I'm going to hold off on this. But Baylor's going to be the play for me, and I'm probably going to play the Baylor side. And I feel pretty good about it. We'll see. All right, everybody. I want to talk to you about our presenting sponsor, BetMGM, and a special stocking stuffer, they're calling it, offer they have for you guys. As you can tell probably by the name, it is a limited time offer. You can only take advantage of this through December 26th. So make sure to do so. Here's what it is. BetMGM is going to give you a $25 free bet. That is because they have partnered with our Odd Shopper channel, very special exclusive deal. And that's on top of this bet insurance they're already offering. So what does that mean? Well, you're going to go over to BetMGM, make a deposit of at least $10, you're going to get that free $25 bet. But it's not just that. If your first bet loses, BetMGM is going to give you insurance equal to the amount of your first bet in credits up to $1,000. So that first bet doesn't have to be 25. It could be even more because your first bet is insured. It can't lose. You'll get it back in site credits at the very least. And if you win, great. You won. So take sure, take advantage of that by clicking the link in the video description below. And thank you to BetMGM for this offer. Again, it's limited time, so make sure you take advantage of it. ASAP. And that'll do it for us today with the College Football Betting Show on Odd Shopper. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you're with me, against me, I would love to hear it. And hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe on the way out. Follow me on Twitter if you would like. I'm at Matt underscore Kajeski. Always willing to chop up some college sports over there. And we'll be back tomorrow in all throughout bowl season covering every single game. So stick around. Until then, we'll see y'all later and good luck.